let's start off. Stocks up big right now in the pre-market. It closed up big yesterday, about 7% on news that you acquired Ambry, a genetic testing company. What will this acquisition allow you to do? I mean, Ambry's a, a, a fantastic addition to our platform. They're the leader in hereditary screening or looking at inherited risk for patients that might have cancer. And they, they allow us to round out our, our platform. We're already uh, in that space. For those that don't know, we're focused on this category called AI-enabled diagnostics, or how do you make tests intelligent and contextualize them for the patient for whom they were ordered. And we cover a wide range. In, in oncology alone, we, we start with risk. Is somebody at risk of having cancer? We do therapy selection. And then we also do monitoring and looking for early detection of disease when somebody uh, might recur. So Ambry uh, was a, a key supplier of ours, and uh, we're su super thrilled to have them as part of the company, and it just really rounds out our, our overall offering. All right. Uh, so Ambry was a uh, key supplier of yours. We just mentioned some of your big customers um, in the biotech space. Uh, Pfizer is one of them reporting earnings later today. When we're talking about AI in the healthcare space, how are we, what are we seeing? What's the impact of AI in the healthcare space overall, specifically tied to your business, of course? I mean, I think, look, everyone is obviously very focused on generative AI and in particular the benefit of large language models. And there's, there's no area where I think it's more impactful than healthcare. Uh, diagnostics really sit at the center of healthcare. I mean, almost every major decision that a doctor makes is made after ordering some kind of a laboratory test result. And so if you can make diagnostics intelligent, you can really route patients to the optimal therapy, and that's what we're focused on. And generative AI in particular allows us to use all these new tools to essentially structure or make sense of all this disparate information and use that information, whether it's physician progress notes or pathology reports or molecular data or CAT scans or MRIs or whatever, how do you kind of put all that data together and then use it to make sure that patients are always on the optimal therapeutic path? And that, that, the promise of that is enormous in terms of both helping patients live, live better, live longer lives, but also reducing the incredible waste in our U.S. healthcare system. Uh, so, Eric, important to note, you are, you're a serial entrepreneur. You started a number of notable businesses and founded them. Um, at the same time, you're talking about acquiring businesses while you're still an unprofitable company that just went public last year. We talked about some of your customers considerably larger than you. Um, are you considering or looking towards any type of M&A or to be acquired by somebody? You recently had another company you founded get acquired and take, uh, get taken private last year, or just a, a couple years ago, actually. Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm fortunate that I've started a, a, a bunch of businesses. I think four have gone public, which is, which is great. Um, it one obviously got sold. But Tempest is at a scale now. We, the, the guidance we provided for this year was uh, $1.23 billion. Mm -hmm. And that we intend to be uh, both cash flow positive and uh, adjusted EBITDA positive. So we've we've turned the corner. I mean, we're nine years old. Um, with the acquisition of Ambry, we're approaching 4,000 people. So it's just really we're in a really fortunate place that we've got a business that's growing quickly, that is now uh, going to be making money. So we're now completely sustainable, and okay. uh, that's just where you want to be. So in terms of looking to to sell or whatever, we're really more focused on our core vision at hand. The opportunity is just so big to, as a leader in somebody bringing, actually bringing AI to okay. healthcare, it's just too big. So Eric, I have to ask, you have a, a number of really big name investors. Kathy Wood is one, uh, owns a large number of your shares through a number of ARC funds, and also Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Nancy Pelosi disclosing her ownership of your, uh, of your stock also led a uh, catalyst for some of the surge there. Why are so many big name investors, why are they so interested in your company? Why do you think? Yeah, we've been, we've been fortunate from, from early on to have incredible investors, whether you know, it's Bailey Gifford or, or T. Rowe or Google. I mean, certainly Arcus and Kathy's fantastic to have as an investor. Um, I think the most recent noise around, uh, around Nancy was more related to Stargate. We, we, we we're also fortunate to have SoftBank as an investor. We've got a great relationship uh, with SoftBank and Masa. And so I think when Stargate came together, people started looking at who might be the beneficiaries of those kind of investments. When you talk about 500 billion coming into the space, you know, people, I think, looked at it and said, well, there's not that many companies that are actually bringing AI to healthcare, and maybe Tempest will be a beneficiary. And I think that probably drove some of that.